Tonight's tale is about Scotland's most famous cannibal, Sonny Bean. Little is known for certain about his early life. However, Sonny Bean is believed to have been born in East Lothian in the late 15th century and was a tanner by trade. The latter part of his life is a little better documented following his relocation across country to Ayrshire and his marriage. The newlywed Mr and Mrs Sonny Bean set up home at Benane Cave by a Ballantree in Ayrshire, Scotland. Benane Cave was rather an imposing abode with tunnels penetrating the solid rock extending for more than a mile in length. In addition, the accommodation featured lots of side passages where a young couple could extend into and convert over for the next 25 years. To accommodate a growing family, the cave's entrance was flooded for several hundred metres, twice a day at high tide, a nice drought exclusion feature. Lacking a trade, it was Sonny's plan to support his new wife on the proceeds of robbery. It proved a simple enough matter to ambush travellers on the lonely narrow roads that connected the villages of the area. Then it dawned on him that in order to help make sure that he could never be identified for his crimes, he should murder his victims. To avoid those unnecessary visits to the shops for provisions whilst at the same time disposing of any evidence, he came on the bright idea of butchering the bodies to provide a high-protein diet of human meat for himself and his wife. The high-protein diet seemed to have been affected as Mrs Bean began to produce little baby beans. Fourteen little baby beans to be precise. Each with a very unhealthy appetite for human flesh. As the Beanie Babies grew up and in turn, through incest, produced Beanie Babies of their own. Their cooking pots increased in size dramatically. Over two decades, generations of Beanie Babies grew up in Beanine Cave, refining their skills of murder and cannibal cuisine, including the now lost art of salting and pickling the flesh. Finds of curiously preserved but decayed body parts were discovered washed up on the surrounding beaches and area. The local authorities had by now established what must have been what must still be to this day, the longest missing persons list ever produced. Although mass searches of the area were carried in order to locate their missing people or their murderers, nobody ever thought to search the depths of the Benin Cave. As the years went by, the family grew older, and thanks to their high protein diet, bigger. And as the family grew, so did their appetite. As many as half a dozen victims would be ambushed and killed at a time in a military-style operation by the Sony Bean Army. The bodies were taken back to the cave to be carefully prepared for the larder by the women folk. Even in the best planned operations, however, things sometimes go wrong. It happened one evening for the Sony Bean Army when they attacked a man and his wife as they were returning from a nearby fair. One group pulled a woman from her horse and had her stripped and disemboweled before the other group had a chance to wrestle the man to the ground. Realising the fate that was about to follow him, he fought desperately to escape, driving his horse into and over his attackers as he had fought for his life. A group of twenty or so people also returning from the fair happened upon the same scene. After a brief and violent exchange, the Sonny Bean army found itself, for the first time ever, at a numerical disadvantage and promptly retreated back to the cave to consider the situation. As they retreated, they left behind the mutilated body of a woman as evidence, a score of witnesses and one very angry husband. The man was taken before the chief magistrate of Glasgow, who after hearing this tale and putting this together with the longest missing persons list, ever in the many reports of the mysteriously pickled body parts, decided to take the matter straight to the top. King James. He promptly arrived in Ayrshire with a small army of 400 men and pack of tracker dogs, and together with a band of local volunteers launched one of the biggest manhunts the country had ever seen. 
like before the search extended through Ayrshire countryside and the coastline and like before, nothing was discovered. That was however, until the dogs picked up the scent of a decaying human flesh that was passing a partly waterlogged cave. The manhunt was closing in. By torchlight the troops entered Benin Cave with swords drawn. They proceeded down the mile long twisting passage to the inner depths of the Sonnebeen family lair. Nothing could have prepared them for the sight they witnessed that day. The damp walls of the cave were strewn and rolled up row of row of human limbs and body parts, like meat hanging in the butcher shop. Other areas of the cave stored bundles of clothing, piles of watches and rings, and heaps of discarded bones from previous feasts. After a brief fight, the entire Sonny Beam family, all 48 of them, were arrested and marched off to Edinburgh by the king himself. Their crimes were considered so heinous that the normal justice system, for which Scotland is so renowned, was abandoned and the entire family were sentenced to death. The following day, the 27 men of the family met a fate similar to that of many of their victims. By having their legs and arms cut off and being left to slowly bleed to death. Watched by their women, the 21 women were burned like witches in huge fires. Legend has it that one of the daughters of Sonny wandered off before the soldiers captured them. She was adopted by a local family and got married at 17. They both had a son. The whole family would kill two to three people in times of hunger to eat them. When the villagers found out, they got her and hung her. But her son and husband had escaped. They bought a charter to one of the colonials in New World, America and were established at an island. History has it that the entire colony disappeared, no trace ever, even until today. They also say that if you sit under the right tree in Scotland, you can still hear the bones of the cannibal daughter hitting against the tree. If you made it to the end, please leave a like and comment and let me know what kind of story you'd like to hear next.